If we believed everyone on the internet, ultimately we'd only assume that the only benefit we're getting from the sun is that it increases vitamin D. I think there's a heck of a lot more than just vitamin D that we're getting from the sun. There are a myriad of different benefits, especially when you start looking at photobiology and how light impacts us. So we're gonna break it all down. We're also gonna come out with a pretty practical game plan that can help you get the most out of the sun. So let's dive in. Now after today's video, I popped a link down below for LMNT, Element Electrolytes. Whether you are someone that is fasting, doing low carb, whether you're vegan, whether you're just trying to control your blood sugar, electrolytes are important. And the thing that I like about Element is they taste unbelievable, but we're talking about something that doesn't have any sugar in it. So we're talking sodium, potassium, magnesium. Amazing flavors. I like the citrus salt flavor, I like the mango chili, and when I want something different, I like their chocolate salt that I can actually put in warm water and drink like a hot chocolate. So the link down below gets you a free variety pack. So you get a free sample pack of all the different flavors with any purchase. So that link down below is drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. It's directly below this video in the top line of the description. Check them out. Okay, we can't throw the whole vitamin D thing away entirely. That's important, right? UVB light that we get from the sun ends up binding to what is called 7-dehydrocholesterol within our kind of fat tissue is where it is, which converts into pre-vitamin D and then isomeres into a more stable vitamin D. Just to recap real quick, I mean, vitamin D can help modulate inflammation. It reduces different cytokines like IL-6 and TNF. It also stimulates the immune system to produce proteins that can help us fight infections. And then what most people are probably interested in these days, it does help reduce fat cell formation and it does actually suppress appetite based upon a lot of different research that we see. Now that that's out of the way, we know vitamin D is important, where no one is discounting that, Let's talk about sleep. So there's a study that was published in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine. Really interesting because it took a look at office workers. 27 office workers that were in interior offices with no sunlight, 22 office workers that got a little bit of sunlight from windows and things like that, not even going outside in the sun, so to speak. Well, they found straightforward, based upon questionnaires and lots of other data, that the less light people got, the worse their well-being and the worse their sleep score the more bright sun that they would get, even from windows, made a tremendous impact. Now this simply has to do with circadian physiology more than likely. We wanna get light when we're awake, helps regulate our circadian physiology, so melatonin is released when it gets dark out. We need that contrast, otherwise the body know, doesn't know which way is up. So to look at this, there was a study that was published in the journal Somnology. Very interesting stuff. They found that natural sunlight at high intensities actually enhances sleep timing. And what this study ended up breaking down was that just one hour, one hour of bright sun exposure can actually enhance sleep timing by 30 minutes. This means falling asleep faster, getting into the proper stages of sleep faster, and they found that it enhances slow wave sleep, which is what is really important when it comes down to memory consolidation, and ultimate recovery for the brain. Okay, so the brighter the sun, the better the impact, okay? So it didn't even take much. One hour of bright sun can improve your sleep 30 minutes overall, okay? We need to be in the sun. Now the next piece is one that's talked about a little bit more, but it doesn't go into the detail that I wanna go into. And that's the world of serotonin, okay? The feel-good neurotransmitter. Well, there was a study that was published in the journal Lancet, took a look at 101 men that were over the age of 45. Now it took people from all over the world, different areas, right? They found that serotonin turnover was lower during the winter months. And hey, what do you know? Serotonin production in general was lower with less sunlight. But another thing that's found is that the brighter, the better. So if you go outside for a short amount of time, your best time to go outside is when the sun is highest and it's the brightest. And it's not to do with vitamin D. You can probably get vitamin D at different stages. It's more about the light, getting the intense light when the sun is its hottest and its brightest seems to have a positive impact on serotonin production. Okay, but how do we know serotonin really plays a role with like anxiety, depression, things like that? Well, that we have to look at some rodent model stuff. So there's a study that was published in the journal Neuropsychopharmacology, and it took a look specifically at serotonin autoreceptors. Okay, these are what actually inhibit serotonin from ultimately being released. So what they did in mice is they knocked out this auto receptor. They knocked it out. So what that means is that it, it did not stop serotonin. So in this case, these mice were able to have serotonin flowing however much they wanted it, right? 
Well, decreased instances of anxiety, decreased instances of depression. Okay, now we see this a lot in various models where being exposed to light and sunlight seems to improve mood, but that's a little bit more mechanistic to understand how that's working there. Which leads us into the next thing, actual cognition. Mood is one thing, but what if sunlight was potentially making you smarter? This is fascinating. This study first was published in the journal Environmental Health, took a look at 16,800 people. Okay, large study. With this study, they found, once again, that there was a dose-dependent relationship between high bright sun, bright sun exposure, and higher levels of cognitive function, especially in people that were older. So more sunlight means the brain was firing more. Well, what's potentially happening here? Well, for that, we turn to a study that was published in the journal Cell. And in this study, they took a look at neurons and they removed the cytoplasm. So they were able to kind of see things that were going on. And there's something in it called urocanic acid. This urocanic acid is sort of an intermediary and required step, required component for histidine to turn into glutamate. What the heck does that mean? Glutamate is excitatory. That means when glutamate is elevated, our brain is kind of lit up. MSG, monosodium glutamate, is added to food to stimulate glutamate and get your brain excited to get a stronger hyperpalatability, light up the brain effect when you eat something. So you feel like, ah, I really want more of that, right? So much glutamate is not good. A little bits here and there, fine. A little bits of MSG, fine. We do want glutamate from the sun, however. This study highlighted that UVB light from the sun increased glutamate activity at two very key glutamatergic areas within the brain. Like, we need that, okay, these intersections. So these synapses, when they have more glutamate, they're in the right areas of the brain. What constitutes the right area of the brain? Well, in other studies, these specific areas of the brain that we're referencing were directly associated with memory and learning in rodent models. So more areas of the brain getting lit up that have to do with things that make us better at memory and being smarter. Now, there's another piece that goes along with it though, and that's the beta endorphin piece. When things make us feel good, we want to do them more. And when things make us feel good, it has a trickle down effect on the rest of the day. That's why people like to work out. They get addicted to it. Well, it turns out the sunlight can do this too. Looks like you can even do it in an acute and a chronic form. There was a study that was published in the Journal of Photochemistry and Photobiology. Okay, this took a look at subjects that were either exposed to UVB light or not exposed to UVB light. And they did skin biopsies. Okay, so they took the skin of people that were exposed to sun versus people that were not. Okay. Out of 12 people that were exposed to sunlight, 11 of them ended up having increase in beta endorphins. So they had an endorphin release that occurred as a result of being exposed to UVB light. Which means that that's why when we get out in the sun, we love it. It does something innate with us and makes us want to be out there. There's literally an endorphin, almost addictive component to being out in the sun, which is why we have to be careful. We don't want to do it too much, right? So getting out there triggers an endorphin release that could absolutely impact us in how we feel. So the light is one thing, and then the systemic vitamin D is a completely different situation. They need to be separated. Photobiology is very interesting and very important for just about everything that you do in your life. I'll see you tomorrow.